This is Judge Joe Brown, and we're listening to We All Be News. News Free Dixie for the 21st Century. Extraordinaire, Dr. John Bass, who Thank also you. was a 2012 We All Be Artist of the Year Award recipient, and also a colleague and collaborator with the late great Mr. Emerson Abel. How are you doing today, sir? I'm well. How are you? I'm great. I just want to get your uh, take on Mr. Abel, uh, your thoughts about him, the passing of this uh, band leader. Well, I mean, it's the passing of a, a legend, really. I mean, this is the you know passing of the torch, really, sort of moment. Um, you know, when I moved to Memphis uh, in 2000, you know, and was moved here as a jazz musician, and started to get indoctrinated into the the culture and the, what it meant to be a Memphis musician, you know, and learn about these things. Uh, the name that kept coming up was Emerson Abel, Emerson Abel, you know, and then you learn about the students he trained, you learn about him as a player, him as a composer and as a ranger, but he was sort of the common thread among all of, you know, Memphis music, and he is really the one of the linchpins, I think, of the Memphis music story, you know, and without him, all this stuff that we think about just wouldn't be there. And, you know, it's it's from, uh, you know, he comes from a long line, and learning the story about Manassas is, mm -hmm. is just, just incredible. I mean, it starts with Jimmy Lunsford, goes on, you know, through W.T. McDaniels and Anzi Horn and uh, Matt Garrett, and then it's Emerson Abel. And he was there, the lo you know, longer pretty much than anybody else. And, um, you know, I don't know, it's, it's just hard to state how much of an impact he had on not only Memphis music, music around the world. I mean, everybody who loves Isaac Hayes, right? Emerson mm -hmm. Abel was the reason for a lot of that music to be there. So, just yeah. I'm just honored to be here today. That is an honor to have you. I feel like you're a part of his living legacy as well. I want to ask you how he influenced you as a musician, as an educator. Your approach to dealing with, with students as well as with your music. No, that, that's a good thing. Um, so when I, when I became the head of the Curve Institute at Rhodes College, um, uh, and our mission was to really dig into this Memphis music story and figure out, you know, uh, peel back some of these layers and, and, and learn, learn some of these stories that were there. Um, uh, it became important that we, um, you know, really find sort of some of these kernels that, and these stories that hadn't been told as much. And one of the first people we brought in um, uh, with Preston Lauterbach to do um, uh, a, a panel discussion was Emerson Abel. It was really important for us to have his story told in a large way and um, we were honored to have him on campus a couple times so we brought him back for another panel discussion um, and uh, we were really honored to be able to sponsor the, the brass note on Beale Street that's in his name um, that was something that was just so important to us this was a missing part of the story and we wanted to you know all the musicians know about it right you, you can't talk to a musician in town who doesn't know the story about Emerson Abel but, I, but it was important for the college to have that story told to more people and, and to, for more people to realize just how important this man was. Do you have a, a particular Emerson Abel story you'd like to share, like a favorite story or an interesting story? Um, the thing about him, I mean, there's there's so many, uh, so many people can tell more, so many great personal stories, but um, uh, the thing that, that struck me was that whenever he got an opportunity to speak, um, whenever we gave him an opportunity to speak, whenever, whenever I would hear him speak, you know, in a sort of a public setting, he would always use that opportunity to bring attention to the other music, Memphis musicians who were not getting the recognition they needed. So he always, he, 
whenever he was there, he would pull out this list. He always carried, I don't know how long he carried that list around with him, but he had this list of musicians that were not getting their due. And so whenever he was in essence getting his due, whenever he was on stage, when we were honoring him, he used that opportunity to make sure that everybody there knew about these other people that were just as, that, that, he, he, that he thought were just as important that were not getting the recognition. And so, you know, I mean, I, I, we've worked off that list. I said, well, you know, I, I go back, I, I have a copy of that list in my office. And I, you know, when, I, when I'm thinking about, you know, interesting people or the people in the Memphis music store that need to be told, I'll go back to his list. You know, it's like, what, what will Mr. Emerson, what will Mr. Abel say? And then go back to that. So um, he taught me so much. He taught our students so much. And I hope the people that were able to sort of attend the things learned as much as we did. Because um, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a smarter person. I'm a better Memphian for knowing Emerson Abel. I definitely agree with that. I want to ask you one more question because it seemed like he was a band director in Memphis School for mm -hmm. 32 years. It's like when he when, when he was the band director, it was a certain golden era. Like he was a part of this golden oh, era, yeah. this movement. But now you look at the state of music education in the country in general and in Memphis in particular, do you think we could ever recatch or even surpass what Emerson Abel Jr. was able to do? I don't know. Um, um, it. I think, you know, I mean, I think that that's a really good metaphor on the state of a lot of things in education mm -hmm. right now. You know, I mean, I, I, you probably could say the same thing about, you know, the, the math teachers and, the, and the, you know, the English teachers back then who were inspiring mm -hmm. people in a different way today. You know, I think just the whole culture is a little bit different. I think we can capture that again. I think kids are, are just thirsting for that kind of thing again. They want to be part of, you hear all these students, they felt like they were part of something bigger right. than them because they were in his band. And I don't know if that can come from the schools. I hope it can. I hope we can we can figure this out and rekindle it. But I think just the most important thing is to find situations where kids can feel that important and that connected to something bigger than themselves in music and in other things. And one last question. You have anything to say to the family of Emerson A. Virginia? Oh, no, no. My, my thoughts and prayers are with, with all of you at this moment. Um, uh, I was uh, blessed to have known him for the short time I did. He made a huge uh, impact on my life. And um, I know he did for so many other people in a much greater way than he did for me. So um, uh, just we'll miss him. Thank you, Brother Don, uh, John Bass. And where's the great dude? Nick Ellington, we love you, manly. Keep on producing and pushing. Thank you, Ron. Yeah.